Hi, in this video, we will briefly describe nuclear reactions, their main classification, types, and examples. We will provide you with the main examples of where you can encounter a nuclear reaction in everyday life. This video will then be followed by other educational videos. Please, give us a few minutes of your attention. A nuclear reaction is considered to be the process in which two atomic nuclei or subatomic particles interact to produce one or more new particles or gamma rays. A nuclear reaction must cause the transformation of at least one nuclide to another. Sometimes if a nucleus interacts with another nucleus or particle without changing the nature of any nuclide, the process is referred to as a nuclear scattering rather than a nuclear reaction. The term nuclear reaction may refer either to a change in a nuclide induced by collision with another particle or to a spontaneous change of a nuclide without collision. This is the basic classification. A fusion reaction is an example of an induced reaction, while radioactive decay of potassium-40 is a typical spontaneous reaction. To understand the nature of nuclear reactions, the classification according to the time scale of these reactions has to be introduced. Interaction time is critical for defining the reaction mechanism. There are two extreme scenarios for nuclear reactions. Direct nuclear reactions and compound nucleus reactions. When a projectile and a target nucleus are within the range of nuclear forces for a very short time, then a projectile interacts with a single nucleon only. These types of reactions are called direct reactions. Products of the direct reactions are not distributed isotropically in angle, but they are forward focused. The compound nucleus reactions involve many nucleon-nucleon interactions. A large number of collisions between the nucleons leads to a thermal equilibrium inside the compound nucleus. Products of the compound nucleus reactions are distributed near isotropically in angle. The nuclear fission reaction is a typical example of compound nucleus reactions. In this reaction, an incident neutron enters the heavy target nucleus of uranium-235, forming a compound nucleus uranium-236 that is excited to such a high energy level that the nucleus splits into two large fission fragments. The highly excited compound nucleus of uranium-236 is also called nuclear resonance. Although the number of possible nuclear reactions is enormous, nuclear reactions can be sorted by type. For each type of reaction, we will show a typical example and we will use a compact notation. In elastic scattering, the kinetic energy of a particle is conserved in the center of mass frame, but its direction of propagation is modified. There is no energy transferred into nuclear excitation in an elastic scattering reaction. It is a crucial reaction for neutron moderators in nuclear reactors. To be an effective moderator, the probability of an elastic reaction between the neutron and the nucleus must be high. In inelastic scattering, the particle is absorbed and then re-emitted. The difference of kinetic energies is saved in an excited nuclide. An inelastic scattering plays an important role in slowing down neutrons, especially at high energies and by heavy nuclei. The capture reaction is one of the two possible absorption reactions that may occur. Capture reactions result in the loss of a neutron coupled with the production of one or more gamma rays. The resulting nucleus may also undergo a subsequent decay, such as beta decay in this example, which is a very important reaction in nuclear fuel. The absorption of a particle accompanied by the emission of one or more particles is called the transfer reaction. These reactions are common in particle accelerators and astrophysics. Radioactive decay, also known as nuclear decay or radioactivity, is a random process by which an unstable atomic nucleus loses its energy by emission of radiation or particle. There are many modes of radioactive decay, but some of them are very important for life on Earth. This is alpha decay of thorium-232. The decay heat of uranium and thorium and their decay products contribute to heating the Earth's core. Together with potassium-40 in the Earth's mantle, these elements are the main source of heat that keeps the Earth's core liquid. 
Nuclear fission is a nuclear reaction in which the heavy nucleus splits into smaller parts. The fission process often produces free neutrons, photons, and releases a large amount of energy. The mechanisms of this reaction will be described in detail in the next videos. Nuclear fusion is a nuclear reaction in which two or more atomic nuclei collide at very high energy and fuse together into a new nucleus. It is perhaps the most notable nuclear reaction because this energy supports almost all life on Earth by photosynthesis and drives Earth's climate and weather. Spallation reaction occurs when a particle hits a nucleus with sufficient energy and momentum to knock out several small fragments or smash them into many fragments. Nuclear spallation is one of the processes by which a particle accelerator may be used to produce a beam of neutrons. This is the basic division of all nuclear reactions. But the actual number of reactions is really enormous. If we could choose the most important one, we would choose the following. Perhaps the most notable nuclear reactions are the nuclear fusion reactions of light elements that power the energy production of stars and the sun. During most of the sun's life, energy has been produced by nuclear fusion in the core region through the proton-proton chain. This process converts hydrogen into helium. In general, proton-proton fusion can occur only if the kinetic energy of the protons is high enough to overcome their mutual electrostatic repulsion. The first step in all the branches is the fusion of two protons into a deuterium. As the protons fuse, one of them undergoes beta plus decay, converting into a neutron by emitting a positron and an electron neutrino. It must be noted, deuterium producing event is very rare due to it being initiated by the weak nuclear force. Diprotons are the much more common result of proton-proton reactions, but diprotons almost immediately decay back into two protons. The cross-section of the deuterium-producing reaction is so small that it has not been possible to measure it experimentally. This is very important because it significantly limits the reaction rate. The average proton in the core of the sun waits 9 billion years before it successfully fuses with another proton. The Q value for the deuterium-producing reaction is plus 1.442 mega electron volts. The deuterium produced in the first stage can then fuse with another proton to produce the isotope of helium-3. The Q value is 5.5 mega electron volts. This second process is mediated by the strong nuclear force rather than the weak force. Therefore, it is extremely fast in comparison to the first step. It is estimated that each newly created deuterium nucleus exists for only about one second before it is converted into helium-3. Helium-3 is then in various branches converted into helium-4. And why is the first stage so important? As can be seen, the first stage of the proton-proton chain controls the rate at which the fuel burns in the sun so that it is neither too fast nor too slow. This energy supports almost all life on Earth by photosynthesis and drives Earth's climate and weather. In nuclear and particle physics, the energetics of nuclear reactions are determined by the reaction's Q value. The Q value of the reaction is defined as the difference between the sum of the masses of the initial reactants and the sum of the masses of the final products in energy units, usually in megaelectron volts. For reactions in which there is an increase in the kinetic energy of the products, Q is positive. The positive Q reactions are said to be exothermic. Proton-proton fusion is an example of an exothermic reaction. For reactions in which there is a decrease in the kinetic energy of the product, Q is negative. The negative Q reactions are endothermic and they require net energy input. A typical endothermic reaction is the production of photoneutrons in nuclear reactors. A high-energy gamma ray can, under certain conditions, eject a neutron from a nucleus. It occurs when its energy exceeds the binding energy of the neutron in the nucleus. In this case, the energy of the gamma ray must be higher than 1.66 mega electron volts. In analyzing nuclear reactions, we apply many conservation laws. 
Nuclear reactions are subject to classical conservation laws for electric charge, momentum, angular momentum, and energy. Other conservation laws not anticipated by classical physics are the conservation of the lepton number and the baryon number. Conservation of isospin and parity are also not anticipated by classical physics. These laws are discussed in more detail on our website. Nuclear data represents measured or evaluated probabilities of various physical interactions involving the nuclei of atoms. It is used to understand the nature of such interactions by providing the fundamental input to many models and simulations. So-called nuclear data libraries group all experimental data relevant to nuclear physics and nuclear applications. It includes a large number of physical quantities, like scattering and reaction cross-sections, nuclear structure, and nuclear decay parameters. From these data, especially nuclear cross-sections are very important. The reaction cross-section is an effective area that quantifies the likelihood of certain interaction between an incident particle and a target object. That's all. Thank you for your attention. If you want to know more, visit NuclearPower.com and don't forget to subscribe. We are preparing more videos like this, so don't miss them.